Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs, and welcome. Forgot that funk here. Thank you for joining me. I was watching a video by my friend Robert Wallace the other day about ghosts, and it intrigued me because uh, there was a line that he said in the video um, that most people can't remember any further back than sort of, you know, two and a half years old or three years old. And that's uh, certainly true in my case. Uh, my earliest memories um, pretty much go back to when I was three. Uh, there's a couple of like snapshot memories I have uh, from earlier than that, but I really even barely class them as memories because it's literally just like a snapshot. Like for example, uh, when I was a toddler, apparently I had a, you know, you put your kid in a car seat. Uh, well, car seats didn't look back in the 60s uh, like they look now. Um, and uh, I had a car seat that had like a little steering wheel on the handlebar that went around the front of the seat. And I used to pretend to drive along with my dad. Um, and apparently uh, we had that car when I lived in Chicago uh, before I moved back to California. And I moved back to California uh, around about the age of two and a half. So just remembering steering my little wheel, that's probably my earliest memory that I have. And that goes back to sometime during 1964. Uh, and I just think it's interesting to sort of, when you, when you comb your mind, you know, um, things that stay in your long-term memory, uh, more often than not, they have a reason for being retained. Uh, you know, um, oftentimes, uh, if it's the first time you do something, um, that gets retained. Um, the, the last time you did something might be uh, easier to access as well. Uh, something that was particularly great or particularly terrible, uh, those types of things tend to be retained. Um, but it's interesting to me when, when, when things that last in your long-term memory for no obvious reason are still there, uh, but don't seem to fit into those categories. I'll give you some examples from my early memories. So when I was about three, um, I remember we, my sister and I, that is, uh, who's a year younger than I, uh, we decided to paint the sofa with um, peanut butter and jelly. And needless to say, mom wasn't very happy about that. Um, so there's stuff like that, but uh, why did you retain that? What, what, what happened there? I don't know. Um, I don't remember the consequence for that. I only remember doing it. I also remember in the same apartment, um, so I guess I would have been three and a half uh, it was Christmas, and because none of us knew how to read, me and my sister and our my mom's roommate's daughter, who's a year older than me, uh, we all decided to open up the Christmas presents on a Sunday morning because we were up early and bored, and we didn't really understand the concept of waiting for Christmas Day. We didn't know when Christmas Day was coming, so we just decided we all agreed to open the presents. But we, since we couldn't read, we didn't know whose presents belonged to who, so we opened up every single present under the tree. And, uh, you know, maybe I remember those things because those things I got in trouble for. But I don't actually remember the consequence of, of you know, being in trouble was. I just remember doing the bad thing or naughty thing, I guess. Uh, but I don't remember the consequence for it. And isn't that kind of ironic? Because isn't the point of like a punishment that uh, you remember it to deter someone from doing that naughty thing again? But clearly, at least in my case, and at least in those two instances, that's not what happened. I haven't retained the information about the consequence, just the act itself. Um, I also remember when I was about in the same in the same apartment, uh, I used to have a little stool that I used to have to put in front of the bathroom sink uh, cab cabinet to stand on so I could see over the ca countertop into the mirror. And um, I remember looking at the mirror and scrunching up my face and, and doing all kinds of weird stuff with my face and, and looking at myself going, that's not me. That's not me. Who is that? That's not me. And um, I don't know. I, I, I find stuff like that kind of amusing. And I wonder if we all go through those types of things when we're growing up as well. If you've done something like that uh, way back in the day, let me know. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about yesteryear, and uh, it's interesting the, uh, the meandering your thoughts go through when you start to really reflect on some of the early memories and ask yourself, why do I remember this? And, and 
is it a core memory or is, is do you just remember things because you keep remembering the same thing over and over and the stuff you don't remember over and over you tend to forget because you've only thought of it like once or twice whereas if you remember something and then you reconsider it a few years later and you reconsider it a few years later it's sort of stays there and then of course you got all the problems with uh false memories or uh you know bad memories where you might meld people together in your memory or whatever it's memories and notoriously unreliable especially over long distances of time um, and maybe that's uh, the simplest explanation for why I can't remember the consequences of being naughty. I just remember being naughty. Anyway, some food for thought. I just wanted to share with you what I was thinking at the moment. Um, I'm about to shave off my blue beard, see? And um, a, a few people have commented about how it makes my eyes look more blue. And uh, that sort of set me thinking because I've said this in a video once or twice before on my own channel, but... Uh, when I was a little boy, especially, my eyes were like super bright blue. Like they jumped out of my head. They were bright blue. And more or less, it might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but more or less the first time people met me, they were always like, wow, your eyes are really blue like that. And I, by the time I was six, I was bored of it already. Um, however, uh, now that I'm grown up and I've raised two children myself, I look back on it and realize that uh, generally speaking, when people commented on my eyes, they were, they were they were complimenting me. It was positive what they were doing. And it's interesting to me that psychological effect that must have if every time you meet someone in your formative years, it's a positive engagement. They seem happy to meet you. And I wonder how much that explains about uh, the way I view the world and, and the way I feel the world views me. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, but I'd be interested to hear what y'all have to say about it and everything else I've mentioned in this video. So, uh, you know, hit me up in the comment section down below and let's have a conversation. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, may all your...